predicted it Wednesday. We thought it'd land Wednesday. That's what we'd heard. Um, there's a lot of different angles on this. If that's the tree, there's a lot of branches on this story. Ooh, okay. I'll take it. All right. Let's start with this. J.J. Reddick. Um, here are two very common traits, two, in highly successful people. High IQ, highly competitive. Not a lot of failures. Smart people who are very driven and competitive succeed. Coach K at Duke has had a lot of smart people and a lot of competitive people come through that program for all those years. And at 77 years old today, he acknowledges J.J. was as smart as any player he's ever had and as competitive as any player he's had. Now, the only thing that gets in the way of really smart, competitive people, men or women, the only trait that can get in the way of that is stubborn. And you see that just puncture really smart, competitive people. I don't know J.J. well enough to know, is he stubborn? But in the NBA, you have to be adaptable. It's a long, long season. There's injuries. There's egos. Uh, you got to be able to pivot. Keep players happy. Um, but I'll be honest about this. He'll be a quick learner. I don't really worry about J.J. Redick. I worry about the Lakers' impatience and competency. Just think about this. The two best teams in the league, in my opinion, they're favored next year are the Celtics and Denver. The best player in the world. Surrounded him with good players. And it still took an excellent coach, Mike Malone. What was it, seven years to win a title? With the best player in his prime? Didn't have to trade for him and give up draft capital. They got him in the second round. Took him seven years with a joker. Best player in the world in his prime. The Celtics landed two excellent players. Maybe not as good as Joker, but Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Excellent players. That excellent coach, Brad Stevens, who's now an excellent GM, Brad Stevens. Took them seven, eight years. They had to add pieces. So whether you land the best player in the world or two other elite players, we've had six champions in six years. The talent is all spread out. Gone are the Shaq Kobe years, the Magic Kareem Worthy years. It's not like that anymore. Hard to get a third star. Now, the good news for the Lakers, they have three nice pieces. Anthony Davis is a top 12 player. Defensively, he's a gem. LeBron's still very, very, very good and a playmaker. He makes people around him better. And Austin Reeves is a solid playmaker. If I had to move him, I would, but he's a solid playmaker. They could also trade D'Angelo Russell if he opts in, or if he opts out, they got 18 million bucks to play with. So there are far worse situations in the NBA to inherit than what J.J. Redick is. But there's a lot of things to consider here. They don't have any shooters. J.J.'s a shooter. He wants a roster of shooters. That's his game. The other thing, like the Yankees or the Dallas Cowboys, Lakers are a big brand in a big city, and the expectations are always a little unrealistic. And here's the other thing. Anthony Davis played 76 games. LeBron played 71. They're not going to play that many games next year. That's the healthiest AD and LeBron have been in years. And that got him a play-in game. And getting almost swept by Denver. They played Denver well, but that, that's what AD playing every night got you. That's what LeBron playing virtually every night got you. I'd, I'd bet my 401k that AD's not playing 76 games as a Laker next year, okay? So that's stuff to think about. So the Lakers, to me, need a lot of patience here. This is not a championship roster. I'm going to propose a massive deal after the break, something to consider. But I don't worry about J.J. Redick. Mike Krzyzewski's like, that's the smartest player I've ever had. And he had, like, Quinn Snyder and other guys. You know, a lot of smart guys. Trajan Langdon was a smart guy. I mean, Shane Battier, it's like Duke. It's like smartest guys in the world, right? Like some of the smartest basketball players ever. You know, Dukies. And Coach K is like, yeah, that's the smartest player I've ever had. As a competitive player I've ever had. So, ah, he'll be fine. I wish they would have made the move earlier so he could build a better staff, but you cross your fingers on that. Lakers? Competency, patience, I haven't seen it in a decade. That's my concern.
So I'm going to throw this out there. I am not proposing this. This is not my big trade proposal, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Trey Young, and I've said before, I would have no problems. Trey Young with LeBron James, space the floor with LeBron and AD, I'm for it. Trey Young sent out a tweet, an hourglass, <laughs> a cryptic post after the J.J. Reddick news. So how do the Lakers get a Trey Young? Well, they could move D'Lo. They could move some bench guys, James Vanderbilt. They could give up three first-round picks. Uh, probably have to give up Austin Reeves. I'd be here for it. I know, I know. I'd be here for it for Trey Young. I do think Trey Young would work here. Uh, it feels like something AD would like because Trey Young would space the floor. It'd be harder to collapse. It's very easy now to collapse on Anthony Davis because the Lakers don't have anybody that can shoot a three. And Trey Young's an elite three ball, a true point guard. At least in 2024, he's a point guard. Um, and he's a playmaker. So LeBron wouldn't have to be the overwhelming playmaker every time down the floor. Trey Young could do some of that. LeBron could play off the ball occasionally, conserve some energy. You couldn't just collapse on Anthony Davis, so he would face the floor. So in the, it, it's the sort of thing the Lakers do. Big, splashy trades, free agent signings, not working through the draft. They're, they're not the Royals or the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's not what they do. They're not even OKC, a well-run team that loves to draft and develop. But I don't know if OKC has the guts to pull off a big trade. Sam Presti likes to draft and develop and accumulate picks, and that's fine. So does Boston. But Boston had the guts to go out and get Porzingis and Drew Holiday, and they're champs. But I do think this works. He's a floor spacer. He is what they are not. In his prime, really quick, playmaker, and can shoot threes. I mean, this team is the Celtics' number one in the NBA shooting threes. Lakers 28th. <laughs> I mean, it, it, he is exactly what the doctor ordered. And it should be noted, what was J.J. Redick? He was a guard that shot threes. How do we know if J.J. Redick can coach bigs? He would never was a big. He's never coached bigs. But I know J.J. Redick. If you listen to J.J. Redick, this is a guy J.J. Redick could work with. J.J. Redick was a playmaker. He was a moving around the floor guy. He was a shooting threes guy. My guess is quarterbacks, no quarterbacks. Playmakers and shooters, no playmakers and shooters. He'd be good with Trey Young. So th I wouldn't propose this, but I'd be okay with it. I think there's a better deal out there. But I do think another thing to consider, if you made the Trey Young deal, and I was at an event in the last six, seven months where Trey Young was there and LeBron made a point of showing up. Just saying. I was at the event. LeBron didn't have to come. Trey Young was there. And LeBron made sure he got to the event. Just to shake hands, say hi.